Um, I'm a senior node engineer at uh, NodeSource. I develop a uh, product we ship called Ensolid. It's a uh, node monitoring uh, tool, and it's, uh, it uh, supports some profiling capabilities um, that you can also get uh, just with open source tooling. So I thought that'd be a good topic to talk about. So uh, what is profiling? I'm going to talk about profiling. Um, profiling, at least when I think about it, it's gaining more insight into your application, what's happening when it's running. Um, usually, uh, most of the tools that we have today can tell you uh, things like uh, where is uh, the time being spent in your program and where is the memory being uh, allocated in your program. And uh, knowing those two things is, uh, uh, can be pretty important because it can save you money. Um, you can uh, cut down on the amount of RAM that you need to run your program. Uh, Any more uh, using cloud services, you get charged by RAM usage. So uh, any kind of uh, memory savings you can get is usually helpful. Uh, obviously, running with uh, less uh, CPU processing is good. Um, it's energy efficient and uh, will also generally save you some money. And then, of course, uh, the lighting customers if your app runs faster than it, it used to. So, um, uh, usually you want to, uh, to do those things and profiling tools can, can help you get there. So, what I'm going to talk about uh, tonight is profiling tools for Node.js. Uh, and there's uh, two different tools I'm going to show. One um, lets you look at the performance of your code with a CPU profiler, and the other one uh, shows you memory usage statistics uh, with heap snapshots. Both of these are built into V8, so Node inherits them, and uh, there's tooling in uh, Chrome DevTools that, uh, you, that you may have already used if you're a web developer. They're pretty much exactly the same with, with Node. And then there's some other tools, like I'll, I'll show our tools uh, briefly as well. Okay, so profiling performance. Um, uh, and you do this with the, the uh, V8 CPU profiler. So how does it work? Well, um, what you do is you trigger it on and off. And then that period while it's on, it's going to sample your code. So it's going to sort of constantly check at a sub-millisecond level where your code is actually running in terms of what function it's in, essentially what line number it's on, <laughs> stuff like that. So it's collecting all this data. And then when you turn it off, it, it sort of aggregates all that data into a nice JSON data structure that you can use a tool to show you all kinds of graphs and charts and stuff like that with it. So uh, here's a link to a uh, article uh, Google has up about uh, using their CPU profiler and, and uh, some hints and tips, which is uh, very useful. Um, usually the, the output of the uh, CPU profiler, it's going to uh, organize things by function, so it's going to tell you, uh, provide a list of functions, essentially, or you'll see visually um, uh, sort of uh, function blocks. Um, and, and there will typically be two numbers associated with those functions. Uh, they're, and they're both time, uh, typically millisecond. Uh, you hope they're millisecond um, <laughs> uh, or sub-millisecond. Uh, one is self-time, the other is total time. So self-time for a, a particular function, self-time is telling you how much time was spent executing in just that function. Total time is that amount of time plus all the functions that that function called. So they're both useful uh, values. Um, usually you kind of want to start by looking at total time. Uh, sometimes you'll see an outlier for a, for a self-time that a function is just taking long just in itself, and that can be some easy, uh, so easy fruit to pick. But um, usually you'll end up uh, sort of looking at the aggreg aggregate time of your function and everything it called. So here's an example output, and we'll see this live in a minute, of, uh, uh, from Chrome DevTools. And if folks are familiar with uh, 
Well, first of all, if you're familiar with Chrome DevTools, then, then hopefully this is familiar with you if you've done uh, profiling in the browser. Um, it's general, this is generally known as a, a flame graph, as kind of a, a flame chart, to be sensitive to the terms. Um, but what it's basically showing you is your call stack. So the way uh, Chrome DevTools works, it kind of shows it upside down from the way uh, things are usually shown. Usually the, um, uh, what you start at the bottom of like your main and then a function it calls and up. Chrome DevTools kind of works down. So this is showing uh, that this function, parser on headers complete, called parser on incoming, called emit. And it's sometimes it's just amazing to look at these uh, these uh, call stacks to realize how much code you're running, especially with something like um, Express, can get uh, it's mind-boggling. Um, so what we're actually seeing here, there's a there's a timeline here, and this is this is useful because um, almost every visualization for CPU profiles shows time on the x-axis horizontally. So the, the wider the, the function block here, the more time it took. So this function took more time than this function. So you want to look for wet width. The height is interesting and sometimes extremely scary, but uh, generally that's not going to have a real effect on your code performance. Here's another view from Chrome DevTools. It's a tabular uh, view. Uh, old school programmers are maybe more familiar with that, right, Ken? Um, <laughs> it's showing, um, uh, so this is actually another interesting view. This is, it's not showing you necessarily the structure of your program, but just sorting all the functions. And you can sort by self and total time to see, you know, which one's bigger. You can then drill down into these to see um, who called that one um, and keep going. And then it's also showing, um, uh, typically you'll, you'll get a file name associated with that. So that's Chrome DevTools, the, the product I work on in Solid. Um, we have some different visualizations. This is the same data, uh, but it's, it's just displayed differently. Um, this is a more traditional flame chart uh, showing your uh, sort of main down here working, working on up. And you can actually kind of visually see that the stack is, is much bigger uh, and scarier than uh, looked in Chrome DevTools. And then the same sort of data over here, function <coughs> names, uh, file names came from in times. Here's another wacky view. We have an even, even wackier one I'm not going to show you. Um, this one is called the sunburst. And it's basically the, the same one I just showed, only the x-axis is wrapped around the circle. Um, it exaggerates parts of the graph and can provide some interesting insights. So that's uh, profiling your code. So the other uh, tool that V8s provide is something to help you profile memory. And it does that with a thing called a heap snapshot. So a heap snapshot is a huge JSON file that uh, describes every object in your application. Um, and then given that information, again, it, you can throw it into an analysis tool and let it sort of see um, which objects are referring to other objects. It can uh, tell you uh, for any particular object how much, how much memory is that object preventing from being garbage collected, which is, uh, uh, can be very important. Um, again, these files are huge, so uh, we generally throw around like 2, 3x the size of your actual heap. So if you're talking about large program using 100 mega memory, um, you might have a 2, 300 megabyte heap snapshot. Um, another link to a Google article on heap snapshots. And uh, generally the analysis tools for these um, group, I, I would sort of say we're at the beginning of stages of, of uh, trying to figure out how to analyze these tools because there's so much data in them. 
Um, so most of the current tools uh, end up classifying all the objects by their class name. So if you're using actual classes or, for instance, if you're using um, HTTP client or server, you'll see uh, uh, class names that you probably recognize in there. If you're using your own classes, you'll see those in there. But a lot of the, a lot of the objects we use are arrays, strings, and literal objects, which don't really have names, but they all get lumped together. And I have a little tip about that later. Um, but that's kind of where we are today, being able to show that. And then given that class name, uh, generally there'll be a uh, number of instance counts and then how much memory um, that they are um, uh, using or referring to. The, the, the memory numbers come in two flavors, again, like the, the CPU profile. One is shallow size, the other is retained size. Shallow size is the size of the object itself. So if you have um, an object which only has one property, it's going to have a very uh, small shallow size. If it has a number of properties, it'll be, it'll be bigger. Retain size is how much memory it's keeping from being garbage collected. So like the CPU profiles, these are both very interesting numbers. Typically, the shallow size, you're not going to run into issues with this, and you're mainly going to be looked at, looking at retain size, but sometimes there's outliers where you may have some object that's, that's really just too big. <laughs> yeah, so you should check this article out. Um, they, uh, there's a whole way they analyze it where they uh, create uh, or identify dominator objects from the tree of references so that they can figure out how much is actually going to, how much a particular object is is keeping around. It's not that if that object was freed, you get all your memory back. But that object itself, if you don't, if it doesn't get reclaimed, it will keep that much memory involved. Okay, so here's uh, the, uh, the Chrome DevTools tool. And I'm not going to show the node source one because it's actually very similar. Um, but So we have the, the list of classes essentially and then for every uh, class you can kind of drill into the objects which is, is pretty neat um, but for every class we'll see um, counts uh, percentages of, of the total number of objects and these shallow and retained size and percentages of those distance is I believe the distance from the uh, uh, kind of uh, root of the, the a, a GC root so things that are farther away are sort of deeper nested objects. Um, you can select one of these things and then drill down into it. So in this case, I have this tag request object and I'm looking at the retainers. So this is telling me who is referring to this object. So uh, this tag request, it's an, an array and it's being held on to by this uh, uh, requests object, blah, 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 blah. So you can kind of chase down an object reference if you want to see um, who is actually responsible for holding on to something. Or maybe you're not expecting somebody to be referencing something, but you can discover it this way. So again, the output's very large. This can be problematic if you're already running. <clears throat> if your application is running with uh, close to as much memory as the machine already has, you may not even be able to create a heap snapshot. So this is another er uh, focus area uh, in V8 that we need to work on, <clears throat> really as a community, is to provide sort of better, better tools. Because usually when you're running low on memory, that's when you want to uh, generate one of these files. Um, really cool capability is to be able to take two snapshots over time and then be able to compare them. And what it'll do is it'll just show you the differences. So this is generally how you can identify a leak. So you'll, you'll uh, capture one snapshot, run your test, or you know, hit it with some load, hit your application with some load, take another snapshot, look at the diffs, and uh, hopefully it might be, it'll be a, a little more obvious what sort of got created uh, in between those two. And then I showed kind of drilling in and out of uh, particular references. 
Okay, so using the tools. Um, so this is fantastic news. It used to be um, open source wise with Node. If you wanted to use the, the uh, CPU profiler or heap snapshot tool, you had to use a node extension and those node extensions were binary. So even though this, these capabilities are baked into V8, there, there was never anything exposed that JavaScript could call them. So was, uh, people had to write native extensions to uh, be able to access them, which is very unfortunate. Um, last fall, I think it was, uh, V8 uh, decided to contribute kind of a new debugging interface, and part of that interface uh, uh, included support directly for the uh, heap snapshot and profiling tools, which is very cool. And so you can access that with uh, node dash dash inspect, and I'll, that's why I'll be doing a demo up today. Uh, the other uh, tool, which I'll show a little bit, is our own and solid tool. It has nice pretty graphs and whatnot. Um, it doesn't go as deep as some of the uh, tools that, uh, that, that come with Node in, uh, Inspect. Um, however, <clears throat> we can capture those files and then load them into uh, the Node Inspect tool if you need to do that. Okay, so I got a little demo app. It's an Express app. Uh, and I'm going to kind of be showing two things. One is that um, uh, it seems like the app's slower than it, it should be. And I could show that by like running AB and looking at times. I don't think I have time to do that. You'll just have to trust me. It's slower than it should be. Um, and the other one is the app seems to be leaking memory. How can we find out when it's leaking? So the uh, source for it, it's very simple. Just kind of, you know, does normal express stuff. It's using views. I don't know if people really use views anymore, but uh, ended up being handy for this demo. Um, listens to the, uh, listens on 3000, in this case. Um, it has a built-in uh, little client simulator, just so I don't have to run AB or, or some kind of load tester separately. And it's just issuing HTTP gets to itself. That's not part of the problem with the app. Um, you just have to trust me. And then the, uh, the, here's the main code is it's just rendering this page, uh, which is a J template. It's like uh, there's three or four templates there. They don't really even really have anything in them. Um, and, and it's all static. So this should be going like this. This should be like sub millisecond time to handle a request on these things. Um, and then I have a little, uh, this is some code that, um, just make sure that the request is actually uh, you know, processed within a certain amount of time. All right, oh no. Hey, I got back. I always get lost there. Okay, demo time. So, let me, yeah, I switched out. Okay, so um, what we're going to do here is I'm already running my own solid uh, uh, server stuff up in the top window. Um, but this is the program I'm going to launch. So this is just the, the app that's in here. And I'm using this dash dash inspect. So if I hit this, then we get some additional stuff that you don't normally see when you run a node app. And so one thing it says is debuggers listening on port 9229. Oh, hold on a second. Should be OK. Let me restart this so we have a cleaner screen here. Um, that there's a debugger listening, um, it's an experimental feature, even though it's shipping in LTS, not LTS. Um, but that's giving you this interesting, huge, long URL. And what you need to do is you need to paste that URL into a Chrome browser. So I'm going to do that right now. And Oh, um, here we go. So if you use uh, Chrome DevTools with Chrome to debug uh, client-side JavaScript, guess what? Very similar. Uh, many fewer tabs. <laughs> Don't have many uh, there. So um, we do have the console, and we have sources. You can set breakpoints, all that stuff. And then the, the profiles tab 
is showing the actual uh, profiling capability. Before we go there, though, I'm going to show this running in, in solid. So I have a couple applications running right now, and this is our express demo. Um, the, this red business is because this is a really old version of express, and it has some uh, vulnerabilities uh, that SNCC has identified, and so it's uh, telling you what those are. Um, so you can fix those. You don't want you don't want orange code. Um, what I'm doing is I'm selecting. There's a little dot down here. If you're running a bunch of apps, you'll see a bunch of dots moving around. In this particular case, I just have one. It's my app. I can select it and get a little bit more information on it. So one thing we're seeing right here, if we look over time, this is showing a bunch of different statistics about your app, CPU usage, etc. Uh, looking at this uh, resident set size, also known as RSS, this is essentially how much uh, space your application is uh, allocated from the operating system right now. We can see it going up and not down. So that's sort of our clue that um, we're probably leaking something because again, this app isn't really doing very much. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be eating more memory over time. So. Let me hop back into Chrome DevTools and we will take a heap snapshot. So this wasn't a big program, but the heap snapshot's 32 megabytes, which is still kind of large. So we saw this before, we sort of have a listing here and we can actually sort by a bunch of different things. The class name, which is almost always useless, unless you're looking for a specific class. Um, objects count, which again, kind of useless, but the shallow size and retain sizes are kind of interesting. Um, I usually just keep it at retain size because it, it's usually the, the thing you want to look at. So we're seeing a lot of kind of, stand, you're going to see a lot of standard things in here um, for every program, like closures and object and compiled code and string and array. Um, you're probably never going to even bother going in there because there's just thousands of objects and what are you going to do? Um, look at every array in JavaScript? No. So what you want to be doing is looking for sort of application level or maybe node library level objects. So we see a timers list, timeout, server response, incoming message. So those are actually interesting. Right, server response and incoming message. Does anyone know what those are? What they what they might be? They're the HTTP request and response objects. It's rather poorly named, um, but once you're debugging code, you'll you'll get familiar with this. So, in this particular case, incoming message is the request, and you can see there are uh, fourteen hundred. Um, there shouldn't be 1,400. <laughs> there should be like maybe a handful, right, that, that have gotten left around. So um, if we go back and look at our application, um, I sort of glossed over it, but there's this really bad function here, which um, is middleware, so it's getting the request and response. It's actually installed. Here, this was you know, maybe my naive attempt to try to clean things up myself. I set a timer, which ends up being 30 seconds, and it'll, it, all it does is check to see if the response actually finished, and if it didn't, it prints a message. Well, for five minutes or whatever it's set to the timeout, it's gonna be holding on to my request and response. That's not good, right? So, um, leaks like this, are usually not that easy to find. Um, a lot of times you're not going to be leaking something as obvious as requests and responses, but that's sort of the technique used to end up um, trying to figure out where you are leaking. All right, so let's get to the um, CPU profile. Oh, what I should do is actually take another one. Um, one more. So take another heap snapshot. Okay, so now that I have the second one selected, there's another view that's kind of interesting. And this one's much bigger. 
Many more. Oh, 51 megawatts. Oh, God. Um, okay, so um, there's another view here. If you have more than one snapshot available called the comparison view. And this is the, the diffing I was talking about before. So usually this is a much smaller list of, of things. And we can see, for instance, uh, between those two runs, there were 1,900 new incoming messages. So again, stuff like that you know, should um, uh, help you kind of at least figure out what you're leaking, and then you may be on your own in terms of figuring out where the leak actually is. All right, so let's go back to profiles here, if I can remember how to do it. Why is it doing it? There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, remember I, I'm running sort of a self-tester uh, uh, in, in the application. It's making, I think, 10 requests per second. So I'm going to record a CPU profile. And so let's start that, and I'm just going to run it. I just ran it for two seconds, because that's all I, you know, it was probably did 20 requests or something like that, that amount of time. Um, so let's start analyzing this. Um, usually start with the chart. So the chart is a timeline chart showing me time, uh, time on the x-axis, and these little slivery things are my call frames that are actually handling the request. So I'm going to zoom in on this. This is, God, this can be hard to do. So if I can do this, there we go. Okay, so again, it's sort of upside down in terms of the usual <coughs> flame graph. And what we're looking for here is width. So when you know we're looking at these kind of functions, these functions are not really implicated because the width of the bottom thing is the same. So you know a particular function didn't really uh, contribute much. So we want to kind of look at where things start to fragment a bit. And we can see it's right here at this parse line. And this is nice that it will actually take you to the uh, code, show you the line. It's on. But if we kind of poke around here, there's there's parse, there's compile, compile, compile. Um, I think there's more parsing here. Parse, 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 parse. Um, and again, the stack is even bigger than I said. Um, so this is an express app. It's using Jade. Something's getting parsed all the time. Anybody know what the problem is? Why? Why is? Why are my Jade templates? being parsed over and over again. Anybody know? You aren't saving a compiled version of it? Well, uh, uh, Express um, will do that, or Jade will do that for you, if you set an environment variable called node env, node underscore env, to production, in which case it'll parse it once and reuse it over again. So um, that's just like trivia that People who have been burned by this, just, I mean, once it happens once, then you know, right, what it is. So, um, again, it would, it would, it would uh, take a little bit of more work um, without that kind of knowledge to, uh, to do that. Real quickly, I'll show um, also our, some graphs here um, in, in solid. I can show the same ones. Find it, take a profile, do a five seconds profile, get a countdown. And so we get a nice pretty graph here. Same kind of data available. I can click on here and, and get more information. All right, so that was it for the demo. Let's get back to the slides real quick. I think I'm almost done anyway. <clears throat> okay, so some profiling tips. Um, Again, the width for, for uh, CPU profiles, the width is the most important thing. Don't worry so much about the height. Those are just scary. Um, I'm going to let you look at these later. I have this, this presentation is on the web. Um, and then profiling, use the, uh, use the uh, snapshot diffing. And that's it.